This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. So let's take a look at this passage as we conclude our study in the six trials of Jesus. As uh, Jesus is, has now been brought back to Pilate, Pilate has realized that uh, there really isn't anything that Jesus is guilty of, at least not that the Roman government would uh, want to uh, would want to impose, and there certainly isn't any reason to put him to death. We're picking up with John chapter 19 with verse 7. Uh, the Jews answered him and said, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out, sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement, and in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. Now, I want us to begin looking and breaking down this passage and seeing what was going on and understand um, the timing. Pilate was at a place and a point in life that God had appointed him for, or at least it was, it was his responsibility. And there were, there were some things that were going on in Pilate's head that really bothered him. Uh, the one, of course, being that he couldn't see any reason to, to put Jesus to death. Uh, but there were some other things that were going on that I find very, very interesting. And this phrase that he was even more afraid, verse 8, when Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, is a fascinating statement. When Pilate heard that the Jews were saying that they were accusing him of blasphemy, uh, and of being God, being the Son of God, which equates him with being God, it created a, a major moral and ethical dilemma for him. This was not the charge that they had arraigned him on. If you go back and remember in our study, they, did, they were going to say that, but then once they got, first got to Pilate, they dropped that and started accusing him of all kinds of other things. They didn't accuse him of this. Went to Herod, brought him back, still hadn't accused him of blasphemy. Now that was what they had decided in those first three trials that they would accuse him of, and they hadn't done that yet. So this was not the charge that they had brought him in on, and now Pilate suddenly sees this intense evil of this particular scheme. He understands something's going on here, that, that he, A, he's being played, and B, that these people are not being honest, that they're, they're really, they're, there's some evil wickedness going on here. Rome had no legal issue with Jesus calling himself God. That wasn't a problem for them. The previous charges that, that they had brought up, that he had tried to get people to stop paying taxes, or that he was trying to overthrow the government and establish himself as a king, now those were of interest to Rome. But again, there was no legal grounds for, or evidence that Jesus was doing that. So, this, uh, this was a dilemma for Pilate, and there was another critical issue for Pilate. Matthew gives us some real quick insight to what was going on, and it's, it, hint, it hinges around this phrase in John that says he was even more afraid. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 19, it says this, While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, saying, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now, why would that have been such an issue? Well, Pilate was, remember, he was Roman and a representative of the Roman government. He was well-educated. And he would have been well-schooled in the beliefs of 
Roman paganism and mythology. So while for the Jews, Jesus calling himself a deity, referring to himself as a deity, to the Jews that was sacrilegious, uh, it, was, it had a completely different meaning for Pilate. Because Roman pagan mythology taught that there were multiple gods and deities frequently uh, throughout time and throughout the, the universe. And that these multiple deities would consort with men and women, human men and women, and their semi-divine offspring uh, were in the world. For example, Hercules was one of their, was one of their semi-divine uh, characters. And so this is what they believed, and they believed that these semi-divine offspring could perform miraculous deeds. So as harsh and as brutal as Pilate was, he would have been afraid to offend these deities and these semi-deities. So if Jesus really was a supernatural being, Pilate didn't want to be guilty of mistreating him. And remember, he had already had Jesus flogged. So there was already some guilt and some fear there. If Jesus is one of these semi-deities, I'm in trouble. And he had already had him flogged and beaten and humiliated. And with that in mind, now we understand Pilate's next question, which is in, in verse 9. Uh, he goes back into Jesus, and he enters his headquarters, and he says to Jesus, Where are you from? Pilate already knew that Jesus was from Galilee. He knew he was a Galilean. Remember earlier in the story, that's why he sent him to Herod, because he was a Galilean. So he wasn't, he already knew that he was from Galilee. But at this point, based on his belief system, verified by the accusations of the Jews that Jesus claimed to be a deity, that Jesus claimed to be God, Pilate wants to know the truth about Jesus. So based on his pagan beliefs, believing that there were deities and semi-deities in the world, and that Jesus could have been one of these, he wants to know where he's from. Isn't that so much like the way of the world, when you think about it? Jesus had this magnetic um, character. He attracted people to himself. They followed him. They listened to his teachings. They watched him perform miraculous things. He was followed by many, many Jews, but he was also followed by many Gentiles. As a matter of fact, um, in John chapter 12, we studied this earlier. John chapter 12, verse 20. Now, among those who went to, up to worship at the feast were some Greeks, Gentiles. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. So it wasn't just some of the Jewish folks that were following Jesus. There were also some Gentiles. In fact, there were some Romans that followed Jesus. Matthew chapter 8, starting with verse 5. When he entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him, Lord, my servant is lying, paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion said, Lord, I'm not worthy of you to come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. He was followed even by Romans. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to 